doing? I hope you're good because I am great. I'm gonna do a little bit of a plant chat on my Cebu Blue Pothos. Cebu Blue? Cebu Blue? Let me know. I usually say Cebu Blue, but for some reason I just said Cebu. I don't, I don't know if it matters. What really matters most is its actual name, its real name, which is Epiprenum Panatum. Cebu Blue. The Cebu Blue Pothos. Hardy through the warmer parts of Zone 9 and up. It likes a hot, humid environment. Native to the Philippine Islands, the Cebu Islands, and then I believe it has spread to the surrounding areas. The lovely vining house plant that has some pretty unique characteristics to it. And this is also considered to be toxic, poisonous, not something you want to ingest, can be irritating to the skin. I don't know how severe that would be, but to people and your pets, something to go ahead, keep in mind, keep that away from them. Back to looking at the plant. This sport of the Epiprenum pinnatum has nice bluish green gray foliage. I will say mine is a little bit more on the dull side and it has some pretty long lanky scraggly growth on it. Talk about that in just a minute. First, I think I just just go over the general care, general growing information, which is that it is an Epiprenum. It does like a lot of light, a decent amount of moisture, though it can dry out a smidge, like let the top inch to two inches of soil dry out before watering it again, but they don't like to go bone dry. It will benefit from being fertilized monthly with an all-purpose liquid fertilizer, or it can make sure to add in a slow release, but don't forget to keep on putting that in there because it wears out over time. Every pothos I've ever had has really, really benefited from fish fertilizers or seaweed fertilizers. I tend to go with the seaweed fertilizers before I go with the fish fertilizer. It's a little bit less stinky and I don't really feel as bad about the ground up fish. And I also water mine with my pond water that I try and keep very, very, very clean. Got lots of good stuff in there. The plants seem to enjoy it. From what I've read online, this philodendron does like a good amount of light philodendron. Pothos. The Cebu Blue Pothos likes a decent amount of light. My Epiprenium Oreums, when I move those, that's the Golden Pothos, when I move them into like bright direct light, which I avoid doing, but sometimes, you know, it happens because I don't know where the sun's always going to be. Uh, they scorch very, very quickly, so they do well with a bright and direct light. It also varies from time to day. This one, however, I've noticed, I've only had it for a few months, but I've been keeping an eye on it, kind of watching what it's doing. And I have noticed that I do think mine would benefit from more light. I say that because you can see how long and lanky, how far it is between foliage on the vine. That's characteristics of plants that are kind of reaching. When they get more light, the foliage will be closer together along that vine and the color should be more blue. Right now it's more green because it's like, hey, 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 I need light. Let me photosynthesize. Why well, I think I'm not getting as much of that blue color. It does still have a hint of blue, but these get a much more silvery blue hue to them when they have more light. So in the house, bright and direct light for a few hours a day would probably suffice. I think that direct sun might be a bit much, but you can give it a try and just be prepared to move it. A lot of it has to do with the time of day as well. So like a south facing window or a window where the sun's gonna be coming through really, really strong. If you don't have any curtains or anything on there, that might be a bit much. But I really don't think that I would be using this in my house in a low light area. Just from seeing the characteristics of the vine when I've had it, and it's, I mean, it's been getting medium light. It's a little bit less light than my Ficus lorata has been getting, which gets a lot of light, and I'm still getting the kind of stretched out growth. But it is growing. It does seem to be very happy. It's put on a lot of growth since I picked this plant up. Pretty much all of this. That's pretty much all new. These really are not complicated plants. They're pretty simple house plants. This one is, I don't want to say new because it's not new. I grabbed this one from my local Lowe's. It was grown from Costa Farms, which means that these will become very, very, very popular and common very soon. They probably already are by the time this video comes out. And with that name Pothos, it does tend to make people think of the Golden Pothos Epiprenium Arium or the Marble Queen, the Neon, lots of different varieties. This one is different. Those are Epiprenium Ariums, different varieties of Epiprenium Epiprenium ariums. Where is this one? Is that bipinatum? If you're a plant nerd like me, maybe bipinatum sounds familiar because it sounds an awful lot like bipinatifidum, which is philodendron bipinatifidum. The split leaf or shalom philodendron, another very common house plant. What's unique is thinking about that foliage. Look at this foliage on a bipinatifidum. And then look at the foliage over here. You can say there's a pretty big difference between those leaf shapes. So, what's happening there, the reason there's a difference in that foliage is because the pothos vine, the epiprenium oriums, and these bipinatums. When they're hanging, that's like their immature growth. If you think about how these grow, they start off on the forest floor below the trees in a more filtered, dappled light, extremely humid environment, and they start to climb. So they start off terrestrial. So once these pothos vines are attached to something, they go, okay, I can do my thing now. 
They start to climb up and up and up really, really tall. And now the plant knows that it can go ahead and start to mature. So as it's growing up, it starts to put out larger foliage. In nature, if these were up in a tree, and vining down like this what would probably be happening is that the plant has reached a certain point where it can't grow up anymore something got cut off and severed then it starts to drape and hang down eventually until it reaches something else to grab onto or the forest floor and then it'll take off move across the ground until it finds something else to climb up and then when it starts to climb back up the foliage will change again that's why sometimes you may notice with the epipredium aureum it has great big huge leaves sometimes on ebay people try to sell them as a completely different plant which they shouldn't because it's not it's just a mature Sure, Epipredium aureum, a golden pothos that has started to climb. When they start to climb up something, they produce large foliage. With the golden pothos, that foliage as it matures does sometimes start to look a little bit like a monstera. It's still really big paddle-like foliage, but there'll be a few splits and maybe some holes in it. Whereas the Cebu Blue, this one starts to put out a leaf very similar to that of the Philodendron bipedanifidum. It's a foliage that is split and ruffled much more similar to of like a metamorphosis practically with the foliage that foliage can be very large also i think from what i've read like anywhere from a foot and a half to like the upper two feet like almost three foot region which is pretty cool i am going to be putting mine on a stake on a moss covered pole or a cocoa lined pole i'll just grab one off of amazon and i'll use that on this when i repot it in like the later spring when temperatures are warmer and i can move it outside I want it to be able to grab onto that really, really quickly and take off. Right now, temperatures are warm in my grow room, but I don't think it's quite enough to get it to go ahead and just do its thing. But first, I'd like to handle the lighting situation. I'm gonna move it into more light. I haven't had to water this an awful lot, but it is in a fairly humid area in my grow space. In the house with drier air, I would probably be watering this maybe twice a week. Like I mentioned before, it's really just once the top of inch or so of soil starts to dry out. This is where moisture meters come in pretty useful. That is as long as they're being accurate for you. Mine's like right in there. That's about perfect. That's pretty much where I want it to be. Once that hits a two to a four, that's when I would want to water it. Actually more like probably a three to a four, I'd want to water it again. I've just noticed this moisture meter specifically when it says things are dry, they're like bone, bone, bone dry. And they are a lover of humidity, being from the tropics, from areas that are very, very, very warm that receive a lot of precipitation. They like it moist. If it's being grown in a hanging basket, it could be more difficult to raise the humidity up. Maybe you have a very bright bathroom you can keep it in. Or above a fish tank, if that's in a bright room. That doesn't always work out well for the fish tank, so as far as algae is concerned. So like with all plants that really appreciate some humidity, I always just default to misting the foliage and misting the top of the soil once to twice a day if necessary. There is some variance with plants as to whether or not they like that. I haven't noticed any problems with this pothos in that regard. It seems to be just fine with getting the mistings. I haven't been seeing lots of water spots any uh, black dots or anything on the foliage indicating that it's causing damage. The soil is like sopping, sopping wet. I probably wouldn't mist it. That might be overkill. Unless, like I said, you live in an extremely dry, arid climate. And when I do repot this plant, I'll be using a well-drained soil mix that holds onto some moisture, but drains well. I'll probably use an all-purpose potting soil. I'll add in some compost, maybe some perlite and sand, orchid bark and charcoal. I wanna create a really nice soil that will drain well and still have a lot of air movement in it so that those roots grow nice, big, and healthy. I also don't want it to dry out really, really fast either. And I'll be putting a pole in the center for it to climb up. Probably a really big one because I want to see this plant put out that really big, cool foliage. I think that'll look really cool. It'll probably take several months, but I mean, that'll be well worth the wait. And just like with the Aureum, this pothos is going to propagate very, very easily there is let me see if i can find it okay there we go here's a piece from that vine that went ahead and started rooting into one of my orchid pots because they're a little bit too close just like with that epipenum arium with the golden pothos they do put out little bitty nubs along the vine right along the node that will grab on to a surface to climb or they'll send out roots to form more terrestrial type growth those parts along the vine can really sense the moisture and start to take off very quickly i don't really have any pieces on mine that i want to cut off right now but i'll just go ahead and like pretend. The fastest way to propagate apophos is to make sure that you get the cutting along the stem where there's a node. So like right in here, 
there's a little piece up here that's kind of hard to see, especially when the camera doesn't want to focus. Oh, there we go. That's better. Come on. Here's a better piece. So right in here, see how this already has roots coming out of it? Could cut right here, cut right in here, and then cut right in there. And you have three different pieces. Stick those into a moist soil, a soil that is well draining, but will hold on to some moisture. Never hurts to pull off dying foliage. And those pieces will take off fairly quickly. I would imagine from uh, how this plant, from how that piece of vine grabbed onto that orchid bark so quickly, that makes it seem like the Ciba Blue really likes the moisture and it has very responsive roots. So I would think that it would propagate in water probably just as well as the Orium, but I don't know that one for sure because I haven't tried that. But I do know that if you make those cuts along the stems, along the vines, you make sure there's a leaf or two on there and you get that little piece of root that's in there. Even if it doesn't have root, as long as you have that section, make sure there's some soil around it so it's not like just sitting on top of the soil if there's no root. If you keep it moist for a few weeks after that it should take off and do just fine. So far I am a really big fan of this pothos. I like its shape, I like its style, the color, the texture. Just overall a really neat aeroid and I think that it will be even more appealing to me when it starts to take on more of that silvery blue foliage even though like I said it sort of has some of it. I've seen them much more silvery blue and it was more silvery blue when I bought it. That's how I know like, okay, all right, you need a little bit more light. I'm so sorry. Didn't realize things were so shaded where I had it. So, you know, whoops. That's all right. When things aren't working with our plants, just move them. Try something different. I mean, not like all the time. Some plants really don't like to be moved, but I don't think that's going to be an issue with this one. Are you guys growing the pinatum, the Ciba Blue, or just the regular pinatum? Either or, both. If you have anything to add, of course, please put that down in the comments. I like for things to be a discussion. A plant chat works best when everybody